what if the romantic hero was a romantic heroine? Romantic heroine, Larissa Clark. Not Larissa Stark. <laughs> and so I... <laughs> so I'm already renaming her, you see, that's how her the she is. Uh, uh, well, that, it really interested me, and so this is what, this, well, this is what I set out uh, this is what I set out to write. And it just so happened that two events occurred uh, here in Australia two years ago when I was on my last tour for Road to Paradise that really helped shape the book into what it was meant to be. Uh, and the first event occurred in Perth where I was doing a stock signing, though clearly not there, but I was. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm sitting there in the front of the store uh, signing happily away uh, and, uh, and a man walks in with his wife into the store, and the book manager rushes to him, and she says uh, to him, and I fear that she may have oversold me here a little bit, but she did say, we have here with us today a renowned, um, uh, best-selling, internationally famous author, Paulina Simons, promoting a new book, Road to Paradise. Would you like to take a look? And the man, you know, he looked at her with skepticism. But he looked at me like I was a king toad in his backyard. <laughs> and he said to her, who's Paulina Simon? <laughs> well, my book manager, my publicist, the sales rep, they're all mortified. And I was like, awesome, what does that mean? Because I've never heard the expression before. <laughs> this tour, and in fact, everything having to do with my career. <laughs> and when I come to Perth, I hope you'll be listening. Um, so who is Paulina Simons when she is at home? Uh, well, at home, mostly, I'm this. <laughs> Examine this picture a little bit. Now it's taken in the year 2000, so clearly I'm right in the middle of the uh, of, of my hot and heavy revisions, or uh, you know, on the, on the bronze horseman and its sequel. I have in front of me two cups of tea, uh, some tissues, uh, inexplicably two keyboards, um, an atlas of uh, Scandinavia and Russia, a Russian English dictionary, a necro, because I probably has been have been sitting in that position for 19 months. <laughs> uh, a little covering my, on my lap. And of course, um, uh, and of course, uh, a trusty bottle of aspirin. You can write a book without a bottle of aspirin. <laughs> so, this is who I am when I'm at home. Uh, and I'm really grateful to the nice man for asking all the hard questions. <laughs> also of my book, because in Song in the Daylight, Larissa Starr spends most of the book answering, or perhaps better yet, not answering that very question, who is Larissa Starr? <laughs> and because, you know, I feel that everything in my life has meaning, and everything is a sign only towards me, because everything is about me. I was in the airport a few days ago looking for some light reading out for the plane. And Oprah is speaking right to me. The November 2009 issue, it says, Who are you meant to be? A step-by-step -step guide to finding and fulfilling your life's purpose. 28 questions that will change the way you feel. <laughs> so I said, great. Maybe after I answer those 28 questions, I won't see myself like this. <laughs> in orange sweats, in my husband's plaid shirt, in which I wrote probably eight of my nine books. <laughs> um, so I turn eagerly to the questions, and I answer all 28 of them, uh, whether I'm meant to be creative, or recognized, or in control, or uh, nurturing, uh, or helpful. And you know what I found out? <laughs> that I saw myself in all 28 of the questions, <laughs> but also in none of them. 
And to illustrate this point further, uh, this is what Walker Percy, the great American Southern writer, has to say on this very subject. He says, imagine that you are reading a book about the cosmos, and uh, you're interested in the cosmos, so you go out and you buy a telescope. And one fine, clear, moonless night, you, you focus this telescope on the sky, and you see in it a star. But it's not a planet. It's a planet, not a star. And it has a, 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 a reddish spot in it and several moons. Um, and so you recognize both the description and the picture. You look it up in your book. You read one sentence about it. And you conclude that clearly you have been reading about Jupiter. And you have no difficulty in saying that it is Jupiter and not Venus or Mars, even though you have never seen this object in the sky before, and even though this object is hundreds of millions of miles away. Now, imagine that you're reading a newspaper, and you come to the astrology column. You're an Aries. You read the analysis of the Aries personality. It says, among other things, you have the knack of creating an atmosphere of thought and movement, unhampered by petty jealousies, but you have a tendency to squander your talents to the four winds. Mm, you say, quite true, I am like that. <laughs> suddenly you realize you've made a terrible mistake. You've read the Gemini column. <laughs> It says, among other things, nothing hurts you more than to be unjustly mistreated. <laughs> but you have a gift of seeing things through, despite all the obstacles. But you also have a desperate need to be liked, and so you have been wounded more than you will admit. Whom you say, quite true. I don't like that. <laughs> okay, so my question to you is, why is it that both descriptions seem to fit you. In other words, why is it that we see ourselves in the self-analysis of all 12 astrological signs <laughs> the same way that I saw myself in all 28 of Oprah's <laughs> Well, to put it another way, why is it that you can recognize and identify Jupiter after reading one sentence and taking one look uh, and yet have so much trouble identifying yourself from 12 descriptions when presumably you know yourself better than you know Jupiter, having been stuck with yourself your whole life. <laughs> Perhaps that man in Perth knew more than me. <laughs> but no, 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 he asked this presumptuous question, and I, I do fear that he was a philosopher king. <laughs> uh, so who is Larissa Stark when she's at home? 